Park, going back to Bowman, and probably thinking about his, his own pretty disturbing analysis of the Holocaust, he says, our century has been notorious for the appearance of highly influential worldviews, so worldviews come back in there, that call for the exclusion of whole categories of the population, classes, nations, races, religion, from the universe of moral obligations. Okay, let's bring this a little bit down to earth and a bit nearer to our concerns, perhaps, when we return then to Tom Reagan. Because from Reagan's North American perspective, he examines the notion of the non-universal nature of the universe of moral obligations. Now, I'm going to say that again, because it's a hell of a sentence, but also it kind of nails it on the head in terms of what we're talking about. The non-universal nature of the universe of moral obligations. There's a chapter in 2001, depending on rights, entitled Patterns of Resistance. And Reagan outlines how religious and scientific views, in the main, have been used throughout history to attempt to block access to the moral universe. So he argues that regardless of and because of the use of the phrase all men in the North American um, Independence um, Declaration, not all persons were deemed to be the possessors of the rights to life, to happiness, and, the, uh, and liberty. In fact, Reagan asserts that, quote, the plain fact is that not all humans, not even all men, were included under the rubric of all men. So as we see from the slide then, Reagan concentrates on four excluded groups, African Americans, women, gays and lesbians, and animals other than human animals. He details the patterns of resistance that were, and still may be, utilized to preserve <coughs> exclusion from our moral in-groups. So this <coughs> historical exercise of exclusion is sociologically the history of boundary building, boundary guarding, and boundary maintenance for the benefit of the moral insiders. And of course, initially, the moral insiders were white male property owners. According to Reagan, as I said, this all leads to what he regards as a less than ideal moral community. And he asked this bold question at the bottom of the screen there. How do the beneficiaries of membership of less than ideal moral community act to retain their privileged status? Well, brute force is one answer, and that's frequently employed, he says. But they are, as implied, other social institutions that can assist in the process of exclusion. And we've talked about it religion and scientific ones. What brings it smack bang to sociology, in my mind, is the fact that Reagan immediately acknowledges that other institutions are involved as well, not least those of economics and politics. And then he writes, and the sheer power of custom, including popular culture, the media, the songs that are sung, and the art of the time. So here then, we've got, in a sense, our problem. And our problem is cultural speciesism. So we might want to tackle that with legislation or think about individuals being abusers and this kind of thing, but the overarching problem is cultural, which is spread throughout uh, society. This is, this is our overwhelming issue. Embedded into the ideology of cultural speciesism is the ideology of animal welfareism. And that says that animal use is not the issue, it's animal treatment. Yeah. And this, going back to the children's books, um, would, would say that um, you know, if you've got a smiling farmer who's kind to the animals, then that's grand. Okay? The, the question of use is, is not the problem. So if there's a case of egregious harm or cruelty, what tends to happen then is the system responds by saying, ah, well, that means that the regulation and the monitoring has failed. And what it really means is that something's got to be brought into, into play to boost that monitoring back up into, into a workable fashion. There was never any questioning of the fundamental issue about animal use. And so cultural speciesism, for me at least, and because of the powerfulness of these, these boundaries that we can create, is our main target. And we've got to figure out some way of trying to challenge cultural speciesism. So perhaps you can help me out and we can, we can discuss it and see, see how we're going to tackle this massive thing.